Hello, welcome to another episode in the RPG and Go tutorial series. Today, we're going to be loading an image, drawing it on the screen, and moving it around. But before we do that, we need to actually get an image to draw. So you can, of course, use whatever image you want, but for this tutorial series, I've decided to use an asset pack. And the asset pack that I've decided to use is the Ninja Adventure asset pack. The link is in the description for a free download. It was made by Pixelboy and AAA, and it has basically everything we'll need for an RPG. It's got a ton of characters with full animations, it's got buildings, different biomes, decorations, interiors, it even has bosses. So once you have the image that you want to draw, go ahead and go back to your project in VS Code and we're going to be a little organized and create an assets folder. So I'm going to create a folder called assets and I'm going to create another folder here and I'm going to call this images and I'm going to put it inside of assets. And this is because, you know, not all of our assets are images. We are later on, we're going to have things like audio and stuff like that. Now comes the fun part, pick a character that you want to use. Um, inside of the pack, there is an actor and then a characters folder, and then just pick one of these. They all basically have the same amount of animations. I'm going to be using the Ninja Dark for this tutorial. So then just locate the sprite sheet for that sprite and drag and drop it inside of your images folder. I'm going to rename it to something that's a little bit easier to keep track of. So I'm gonna call my ninja.png. And if we zoom in on this, we can see that it's got some cool stuff. We not only have the ninja itself, but we have a ton of different animations. This one looks like a running one and then a running um, up one. And then we have even some attack animations and other things like that. So cool. Let's go ahead and display this on the screen. Back inside of our main.go file, we need a way to basically hold our image. And the simplest way to do that is just to put a variable inside of our game struct. So inside of the curly brackets in our game struct, we can define something and I'm gonna create a variable. I'm gonna call mine player image and I'm making mine uppercase P so it's a public field. You can do whatever you want. There's something that's gonna be addressing our game struct anyways. And it's of type a pointer to Eviton image. Okay, so how do we load in this image? Well, we can use a helper function that's provided in the Ebiten util package. It should have automatically been imported whenever we first did the uh, first episode, but if not, that is the import right there. So what we can do is we can do Ebiten util, and the function we're looking for to load an image from a file is new image from file. This takes in a path and returns three values. The three values being the Ebiten image pointer that we want, the actual image itself, and an error. But first we need to provide a path and the path is relative to the root of the project or wherever the executable lives whenever you build it. So for us, that's going to be inside of the assets folder, inside of the images folder, and then the name of the file, so ninja.png. Of course, to actually do something with this uh, function call, we need to grab these three values. And so on the left side of the expression, I'm going to define them here. I'm gonna say uh, player image, and I don't actually care about the image data itself, so I'm just going to underscore it, basically saying I need to put it in a variable, but I don't care what it is, so just make it an underscore. And then we do care about the error, so I'm gonna say error here. And the convention for Golang for errors is ERR. So now we've loaded an image, but Golang has a really cool feature where it returns errors as values, which is what this is here. And basically what this is saying is, we're just giving you the error, you handle it on your end. So in order to you know properly uh, make use of this new image from file, we have to make sure that we actually load it in the file correctly. And this can handle things like the file was not found, we provided an invalid path, things like that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make sure that this error actually exists. If it does, we'll handle it. Otherwise, we can continue moving forward. So we'll say if error does not equal nil, and this basically says, does the error exist? If so, handle the error. And for us, if the player image doesn't load, that's pretty bad. We can't really continue with the game unless we have a player image. So for me, I'm gonna do a log.fatal, and this will basically um, just you know print out the error and then give us an exit status of one. So we can do a print error here, and this will basically exit the program before actually running the game. So cool, we've not handled an error, and we'll see that the squiggle land for error is gone, but we still have one over image, and that's because we have declared it, but we haven't used it. Golang is awesome and that it doesn't allow unused variables, so we have to keep a nice clean code base. Um, so let's go ahead and add this variable inside of the game constructor here, this game struct initialization. So I'm gonna use the uh, typed uh, value here. So I'm gonna do player image colon, and then I'm going to assign that to our new player image variable. So now we should have a valid player image, but we're not using it yet. So how do we use our player image? Well, first I'm gonna get rid of this debug print statement. We don't need it anymore. And we're going to draw our player. 
This is going to be, of course, after the screen dot filled so that we can actually see it because remember things are layered on top of each other. And so we want to draw the player onto the screen. The screen is also just an Everton image if you've noticed. And so the way we draw an image onto another image is we do screen dot draw image. This will draw whatever image this is onto our screen. So now what we can do is we can provide that image. So I'm gonna do G dot player image for the image. And then we have this other thing called draw image options. For now, let's just use the default ones. So let's do ebiten dot draw image options. And this will create a default draw image options struct for us. So this should be all that we need to actually draw a sprite on the screen. So if we do go run dot here, you'll see that we can see our entire sprite sheet on the screen. Cool, now we can debug our sprite sheets to make sure that you know they're actually all showing up correctly. But let's go ahead and go a little bit further with this. So a sprite sheet, of course, is not supposed to be drawn all at once. We're supposed to draw only portions of it and then sort of pick and choose which ones we want to draw in order to create animations. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab out this corner sprite here, this top left corner. The easiest way to do this is to grab a sub image. We can do that by just basically going into our main.go file. And then inside of this uh, draw image here, instead of just passing in the image itself, we could do something like dot sub image. And this takes in a parameter image dot rectangle. This is basically just a rectangle that defines a you know rectangular shape that we want to crop out of this image to display. So instead of displaying the whole thing, we'll display just this portion. For this, I'm going to use their function called uh, rect that's inside of the image library here. And the rect allows us to create this image rectangle struct. It has four parameters, which are x0, y0, x1, and y1. x0 and y0 uh, refer to the top left corner of the rectangle, and the x1 and y1 refer to the bottom right. It's important when making these to remember or to know how coordinate systems work in many game frameworks. So, coordinate systems are a little bit weird in um, game frameworks in that the y is inverted. The X is the same, so left side is zero, and then the uh, right side is the width of the image, but the Y is different. The top is zero, and the bottom is the height of the image. So, if our objective is to crop out this first sprite, what we need to do is we need to set X zero to zero, Y zero to zero, and then we need to go to the bottom right, which is 16 and 16, because these tiles are 16 by 16. Given that knowledge inside of this rect here, we can do 0, 0, 16, 16, and that should be good. But now we're getting another error, and this error is cannot use um, this value that we've gotten, value of type image, as an ebiten image. And this is because, you know, they're just not the same image. For some reason, the sub image returns an actual, the actual image data rather than the, Im the ebiten image pointer that we want. So what we can do is we can do a golang type assertion by doing dot, and then parentheses and the type we want it to be. So we can do dot ebiten dot image here, and this will convert it to this image at runtime. The reason that we're able to do this like this is because we know that this sub image will be able to cast to an ebiten image no matter what. So we are all set with this. We can then do go run dot, and we can now see that we only see the top left one. Okay, so now that we've drawn our player on the screen, let's actually move it around. And in order to do this, we need to keep track of its X and Y value, its position. The easiest way to do this is just to throw them into our game struct. So I'm gonna create two variables and I'm gonna make them of both of type float 64. Uh, so I can do this kind of syntax here where I can do X comma Y float 64. This is the same thing as saying X of type float 64 and Y of type float 64. It's the same thing. And this will just basically be the X of our player and the Y of our player. And what we can do now is inside of the draw image, instead of just passing in this draw image options as a default, what we can do is we can declare it up top here. So we can say options equals this. And then what we can do is we can say options.geometry.translate. And this takes in the um, X amount to translate and the Y amount to translate. For us, it's going to be G.X and G.Y. Then we can go over to draw image and we can see that it takes a pointer to draw image options. So we can pass in a uh, pointer to our draw image options. The way you do that is you use this ampersand uh, operator here. Then what we can do is we can actually, you know, change these values. So inside of game here, I'm going to set the initial X value to 100 and the initial Y value to 100. And boom, we have our player at position 100, 100. 
but a player is not a player if we can't play it. So let's go ahead and actually implement some of that functionality. For this, we need to actually, you know, um, react to key presses. We have to have a way to say like, if you've pressed this button, then do this. And it's very, very simple to do that in Ebit Engine. All you do is you say, if Ebit dot is key pressed, and this checks if the key is held on this current frame, then we can do Ebit dot key right maybe. And if we press the right key, we want to add to the X value. So I'll say G dot X plus equals two. Let's go ahead and make four for all cardinal directions. So let's do four of these here. I'll make one for key left. And the key left, of course, will subtract from X. I made five by accident. <laughs> and let's do one for key up. Key up will subtract from Y, because remember, the coordinate system is weird and the Y is inverted. Key down will add to Y. And that should handle all four of our directions. So now we can go ahead and do go run dot. And if we, you know, press the arrow keys or whatever keys you set it to, you'll see that our sprite is now moving around. Now, of course, there's a lot more that goes into entities and it's really not scalable to just put all of your images and position values into one big struct like this. So in the next video, we're going to go over how we can architect a system that manages a ton of different entities that have maybe different functionality in sort sort of an organizable and scalable way to create a full fledged game without all of this spaghetti code. So stay tuned until then. And with that being said, that about concludes the video. Uh, one thing before I go though, in the description, there is a link to a GitHub repository and this is the official repository for this tutorial series. It is the RPG and Go tutorial series uh, repository here. And the cool thing about this is if you click on the branches, there are different branches here. There's the main branch and there's the episode one branch. And this is actually the code that we wrote in episode one. After this video is done and published and I've done a little bit more tweaking, I am going to put up the episode two branch and there will be the code for that. And basically it'll be a snapshot of all the code that we've written up until that point with some helpful comments too. Um, I'm also planning on adding some readmes to maybe talk about some of the changes I made. It really depends on how much time I have. Um, but yeah, that's how we're going to be doing things for this series. So yeah, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and consider joining my discord where there's a ton of independent game developers that are talking and having a good time there. And also consider supporting my Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day. See ya.